stereo isomerism. The isomers obtained by the difference in spatial arrangement is known as stereo isomers. The isomers obtained by the difference in their spatial arrangement is known as stereo isomers. And this phenomenon is known as this phenomena is known as stereo isomerism. So, stereo isomers can again divided into two. The one is conformational isomers. Conformational isomers. And the second one is configurational isomers. Stereo isomers are of two types conformational isomers and configurational isomers. Then, configurational isomers are again classified into two. The first one is optical isomers and the second one is geometrical isomers. The essential criteria to produce optical isomers are chirality. Then, geometrical isomers are obtained when restricted rotation is there. Restricted rotation is there. Now, let us study the details of configurational isomers. All the stereo isomers based on the spatial arrangement of the molecules. That is, the three-dimensional structures of the molecule. The configurational isomer also based on the three-dimensional representation of the molecules, that is spatial arrangement of the particular compound. So, before going to the details of this conformational isomers, let us learn how to draw the three-dimensional structure of these molecules in a piece of paper. So, the two methods actually we used to represent the three-dimensional molecule in a paper is one ball and stick model ball and stick model and the second one is dashed and wedge representation dashed and wedged wedged dashed and wedge line representation Consider an atom A is attached to two, four other molecules B, C, D and E. So, imagine this is the central atom. So, how can we represent this molecule in a paper? If we use the ball and stick model, we can draw this as A. The central atom A is like this and uh, here all the other four atoms are represented like this B, C, D and E. So, each of these letters represent atoms. So, this is the ball and stick model. The sticks corresponds to the bonds and the balls corresponds to atoms. So, in ball and stick model, balls correspond to atoms and sticks represent the bonds. 
But coming to dashed and wedge line representation, here the central atom A is written like this, and the four other atoms are written like this. So one, two of the bonds are represented by using simple lines B, C. And uh, two more bonds are there. One of the bond is represented by using a wedge line. So here I am going to write D. And one of the bond is represented by using the dashed line. And uh, one more atom is there that is E. So, so here the bonds are represented by, bonds are drawn by using Symbol lines, dashed lines, wedge lines. Actually, in this model, these two simple lines represent the bonds which is lying on the plane. Here, I am drawing this molecule in this paper, in this plane. So, these two bonds, these two bonds, that is B and C, are lying in this plane. Okay, lying in this plane. So, these bonds are lying in the plane. While, while the wedge line, this line, wedge line represents the bone which is above the, which is lying above the plane. To get the concept of these structures, we have to imagine. So, imagination power only uh, help us to understand how these models works. So, here this bond is projecting outward. If, if I am standing here and watching this molecule, then I can see, this two, see these two bonds are lying in the plane and uh, this bond is projecting towards me. So, so, this bond represents above the plane, projecting above the plane or projecting towards the person who is watching this molecule. But on the other hand, this bond is projecting backwards. That is, I am standing here, D is projecting towards me while the bond E is projecting away from me. So, we can say dashed line represents the bond which is below the plane. These are the two structures which is used to represent the three-dimensional molecules in configurational isomerism representation. Okay, let us learn about the types of configurational isomers. The first one is optical isomers. The optical isomerism is based on two criteria. The first one is chirality. Chirality in the sense, if you take uh, hydrocarbon, carbon, the valence, you know, the valence of carbon is 4. So, carbon is attached to 4 groups. So, if carbon is attached to 4 different groups, for example, one of the group is CS3, then C2, H5, then OH and then NH2. In this molecule, the central carbon is attached to four different groups. So, this carbon is called a chiral carbon or this is a chiral carbon. Optical isomerism occurs only when a chiral group is there. Then, so many other details are there about chirality and we will discuss about it later. So, move on to the next criteria that is how this molecules behaves with plain polarized light. So, how these molecules behave with in plain polarized light. So, first of all, we should know what is plain polarized light. Actually, if we glow a bulb, uh, 
the light produced is not a not plane polarized actually if a bulb glows the light produced from this is not a plane polarized light that means light waves travels in all the directions so in ordinary light the light rays vibrate in all the directions in all the direction in all the directions which is perpendicular to the propagation of the light waves perpendicular to the propagation of the light waves propagation of the propagation of the light waves unlike this waves plane polarized waves vibrate in only one direction only one direction so plane polarized light is a light which is vibrate in only one direction so optical activity or optical isomerism is depends how these molecules behave when this when this plane polarized light is passing through this so when plane polarized light is passing through a molecule if it shows optical isomers that is if it is optically active optically active means optically active means a molecule which is showing optical isomers a molecule which is showing optical isomers are known as optically active compound if this molecule not showing any optical isomers then is optically inactive optically inactive if plane polarized light is passing through a molecule if it is optically active then when plane polarized light is passing through this molecule either the light waves are rotated clockwise or rotated anti clockwise so if the molecule rotate the plane polarized light in clockwise direction then it is called a dextro rotatory dextro rotatory while if the molecule rotate the molecule in anti clockwise direction then it is levo rotatory levo rotatory and dextro rotatory is represented by using the small letter d or we can represent this by using plus sign same way levo rotatory is represented by using the letter l or it can be represented by using the negative sign dextro rotatory and levo rotatory compounds of the same molecule is known as optical isomers of that compound okay now imagine the molecule will not rotate there is no such rotation of plane polarized light then it is categorized as optically inactive i mean plane polarized light is passing through this molecule and this is traveling in a straight direction without any directional change then that is categorized as optically inactive molecule and the nature of this compound can be determined by measuring this angle of rotation maybe this Uh, rotation in clockwise or maybe in anti clockwise that doesn't matter anyway instrument which is used to measure the angle of rotation is known as polarimeter 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 is a device which is used to find out the angle of rotation now let us study the instrumentation of polarimeter
we know ordinary light is not polarized so if we use an ordinary light sodium light it will produce light which is not plane polarized we have to convert the light from the ordinary light into plane polarized light to convert non polarized light into plane polarized light we have to use polarizer polarizer convert non polarized light into plane polarized light the normally used polarizer is nickel prism so when non polarized light passing through this nickel prism it acts like a grating so polarized light will be produced so the light coming from polarizer is plane polarized now we can pass this plane polarized light through our optically active compound so we have to take a cylindrical tube to take our take our compound and this is known as polarimeter tube polarimeter tube so when plane polarized light is passing through our compound will either rotate clockwise or anti clockwise direction to find out the value of the rotating angle we have to place an ana place an analyzer here analyzer measure the value of observed angle and observed angle of rotation is represented by using the letter alpha alpha is the observed angle of rotation the observed angle of rotation depends upon the wavelength of the light used wavelength of the plane polarized light which is used in this experiment and it depends upon the nature of the compound nature of the compound and it also depends the number of optically active compounds number of molecules number of molecules present in the path of the number of optically active molecules present in the path of the light path of the light also it depends upon the concentration of the optically active compound concentration so it is 1 2 for concentration of the optically active compound so let consider the concentration as c and uh, if the length of this tube is l it also depends that is the observed angle also depends upon the length of the polarimeter tube and uh, it may depends upon the temperature of temperature also so these are the factors which influence the observed angle sometimes the solvent we used to dissolve the our optically active compound may also depends the observed angle from the observed angle we can find out the specific rotation of the compound specific rotation of the compound in specific rotation represented in square brackets so specific rotation 
is equal to the observed angle divided by the concentration into length. This is the observed, that is observed, observed angle divided by concentration, concentration of the compound, concentration of the compound into length of the polarimeter tube length of the polarimeter polarimeter tube the unit of concentration is gram per milliliter and uh, unit of the length is decimeter and the specific rotation is normally represented as represented with the temperature as superscript and the wavelength of the polarized light used as subscript. Specific rotation can be defined as the Number of number of degrees of number of degrees of rotation observed when the concentration and length of the polarimeter tube is unity. That is concentration equal to one gram per milliliter and the length equal to 1 decimeter. Value of specific rotation help us to identify the nature, optically active nature of the given compound.